There we are. Welcome to the moon. As viewed from... Oh my gosh, my connection's not very good. Welcome to the moon as viewed from southern Alberta. I am in northern Vulcan County, just outside of Calgary, Alberta. And we've got an iPhone 11 Pro attached to the eyepiece of an 8 inch diameter or 20 centimeter diameter Newtonian reflecting telescope that's on a Dobsonian, a wooden mount that's not tracking. And that's why you're seeing the moon drift slowly across the field of view here. Because that's the Earth's rotation moving the moon as seen from here on Earth. I'm going to reposition once again. Not a bad view, as you can tell, uh, it's still uh, twilight here. Uh, the sun is behind some clouds in the west, but not quite below the horizon yet, I would believe. Let's see how much I can zoom in here. There we go. Some nice details. We see more of the details near the Terminator, the line between night and day on the moon. Gives us more relief, whereas as you're further away from that, uh, there are fewer shadows to give you that definition. But there, further away from the Terminator line, the night-day line on the moon, for example, in this view, we see more of what we call the albedo features, the brightness features. So we've got some... Uh, dark areas. Those are the seas, or in Latin, maria, plural, or mare, singular. And then we've got kind of medium gray areas with lots of craters. Those are the highlands. And then we've got some uh, very bright little splotches. Those are more recent impacts that show up uh, with very rough terrain, and they reflect back very light color. It's been a while since I've done a broadcast. Um, some of you who are local to Southern Alberta know we had a, a little spot of weather uh, for the last, oh, let's say 10 days where it got quite cold. So we're just letting the Earth's rotation move the moon across the field of view right now. So as much as I've magnified the image, I've also magnified the Earth's rotation. The atmosphere is pretty steady. We can see a little bit of shimmering action going on there. I hope you can't hear one of my dogs barking in the far distance. So if it's dark where you are, then you'll notice there's a bright star to the upper uh, left of the moon. Uh, it's not yet visible here in Alberta. Uh, the sky's too bright, but that bright star is the planet Mars, which we really won't see much of if I try to point telescope. And the question is asked, is that my max zoom? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, we're getting pretty close to it here. And if it was a... Uh, oops. Yeah, that was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? <laughs> This is a three camera system phone. And what that means is uh, it's kind of tricky to figure out exactly what zoom level I have to be at in order for it to function properly. Uh, the three, the, the system works because I can point the camera down the eyepiece. But because there's three different cameras, not all of the cameras are able to point down the eyepiece directly. And so when I try to zoom in a little bit more, and I'm going to have to kind of not overdo the magnification, uh, it'll switch to a different camera, and that different camera is not lined up um, 
with the eyepiece and also uh, the mid-range camera on this iPhone 11 Pro is the one that's the most light sensitive and it's the one that seems to handle the views the best. So even though I can theoretically zoom in more, you'll see it blanks out pretty quickly here. So I have to now zoom back out. Yeah, the uh, even though it looks like it's bright enough, uh, the maximum zoom telephoto on the uh, camera or on the phone just doesn't seem to handle the light levels very well and it, it blanks out when it can't figure out what to do. Thank you for all those hearts. Well, it was pretty calm weather today, very little winds, but uh, I've been looking at the the weather satellite images and it looks like there are some winds coming in from the west over the mountains, west of me. And um, sometime in the last, I want to say 20 minutes, those breezes have picked up here. Now, it's uh, not super cold, but when the breeze picks up, it's uh, not that pleasant. So I'm not sure how much longer I'll be able to stay out here. Um, when I was first scoping out, no pun intended, uh, the ability to go uh, live here, uh, it was calm and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll go until uh, it gets dark. But uh, the winds have picked up. I'm in a somewhat sheltered area in my yard, uh, so I'm not directly impacted, but it definitely does cool things down a little bit. So let's have a look at some of these areas on the moon. So we've got these smoother areas, which are basalt lava flows. Those are old, big impacts. And when those occurred over 3 billion years ago, the moon was still somewhat liquid in, inside. And uh, the cracks created by those impacts uh, allowed the magma to come to the surface and flow out as these basalt lava flows. They have fewer craters than the kind of medium gray highland areas and uh, that's because they are younger. The highland areas are uh, probably closer to four billion years old. They've seen uh, what's called the late heavy bombardment which is roughly ending at around 3.8 billion years ago. And then kind of right near the f middle of the view right now, we've got a tiny impact crater with a kind of a spray of, of lighter gray material coming out of it. Not completely all the way around the crater, but oops, went too far. Let me just push it back a little bit. But um, most of the way around, now I'm going to see if I can figure out a few things here. Uh, the usual issue, my hands are cold enough now that my smartphone doesn't quite recognize when I am trying to do something on the screen, on the touch screen. 